In this video, I'm going to give you five secret cakewalk tips that might just save your life. Obviously, not literally. You can't actually die from not knowing how to convert audio into MIDI, for example. Or can you? Hi, folks. I'm Mike. And I hope you will. Now, before we get started, I'm thinking about making this a regular segment where I just give you five quick tips to do with Cakewalk, which are hopefully fun and easy to implement. Let me know in the comments down below if this is something you'd like me to do regularly. Now, for this video, I've put them in a particular order, starting off with number five. I think this is the one that you're most likely to already know about, unless you're kind of a new beginner in terms of Cakewalk. The last one, however, is something that I reckon probably at least 90% of you don't know about. So stick around for that. Let's get started with number five. I've oh, already done that bit. Five. So here's the scenario. You've been working on this song for a while now. You've been doing a number of edits on different tracks and you've changed their size as you work on them. Like so, you've made some bigger, you've made some smaller to get them out of the way and you end up with this higgledy-piggledy kind of mess. As I scroll down through this song here, you can see there's all different heights of track here. Now that's not a great use of screen real estate. So you want to do a bit of a tidy up. So you think, well, I'll make them all smaller again or at least all the same size. So you go through and you start dragging around like this this and then after about oh 10 seconds or so you get really really bored and you start to do something else because who wants to do that you want to change the height of them all at the same time it's very easy to do and i'm going to show you how to do it now first of all i want you to press Control a on the keyboard to select all of the tracks like so now as you start to drag out the bottom of a track like say this one here this red one hold shift on the keyboard and ping hey presto they all go to the same size you drag your mouse up and down they will all retain that size that's very very cool and you've cleaned up your sort of interface there quite nicely now if you go to one of these tracks i'll go to this red one here it doesn't matter which one i'll right click and i'll go down to the bottom of this little pop-up here and i'll go set as default height okay now what's going to happen now is as i add a new track in i'll insert an audio track here it inserts at the same height very nice, very nice way to keep tidy. Now, you may have gotten into this mess in the first place because you kind of ignored uh, one of the great features of Cakewalk, in my opinion, and that's the auto track zoom feature. This is going to let you expand tracks on the fly as you use them, and they'll go back to the default size when you've stopped using them. Really easy to use. So you go up to view up the top here, and then you go down to auto track zoom. You switch that on like so. They'll all come to this sort of default size down here again. Now, nothing much has changed at the moment. So what we need to do is go to the active track this one at the top here which is active and expand that to the sort of size that we may want it to be if we were working on it now as we click to another track this is where the magic happens you click on it and hey look at that it just automatically zooms in on the track that you are working on. Now, if you want to make all of the other tracks, the inactive tracks, if you like a different size, just go to one of them and adjust the size and they will all uniformly adjust in size. OK, so you can click on piano here, so on and so forth. And that really keeps your workspace really nicely organized. Four. Now, a quick heads up with this next tip. You do need Melodyne installed for this one to work, but it will work with the most basic version of Melodyne. If you haven't tried out the demo of Melodyne yet, this may be a, a good chance to try it out and see if you're going to like it or not. So if you're like me and you're not a great keyboard player, I think we know this, but... You can ad lib a bit with your voice. You don't have to be a singer, but you can sort of ad lib melodies, blah, 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 et cetera, et cetera. Obviously, not that one. Now, this is a really fun way to turn those ad libbed melodies into instrument parts. So let's take a look at what we're going to do here. I've got this guitar part here. Let's just have a listen. <laughs> This may be familiar to regular viewers of the channel, this particular guitar part. And what I've done is I've ad-libbed this kind of melody over the top of it with my voice. We'll have a listen to that. Okay, fine, that's enough of that. Just notice right at the beginning of that, I kind of slid into the first note. Have a listen. I don't know if you picked that up. Yeah, I 
Okay, that's interesting. Remember that. So what we're going to do is take this audio part here, this sort of quick vocal I've recorded, and we're going to drag it down onto this MIDI track here. This is a MIDI track which is hooked up to a virtual synth with a violin sound on it. Okay, so no, this is not an audio track, a MIDI track. And we're going to drag this audio onto it like so. Bing! And it pops up with this little dialogue asking us what type of uh, algorithm we'd like to use. Now, there could be all kinds of different choices here, depending on your version of Melodyne, I think. But I'm going to choose Melody. I think that's the basic thing that you will get. And I'm going to click on OK. Does its little bit of magic. And, oh, we can see there that some MIDI notes have already appeared. Let me just mute that original vocal. Let's have a listen to this violin part now. Now, I may well want to go in and do some editing and things. I think some of the velocities there, you know, could have had that, that note, for example, there could have been a bit louder. But you get the gist. You may have to do a little bit of editing, but it's a really cool way, I find, of kind of ad-libbing some really organic sounding melodies. If you're not a great keyboard player and ad-libbing on the keyboard is not your strength, I think this is a really fun thing to do. I've used it for several tracks for solo parts of solo instruments. Solo parts of solo instruments. Why did I say that? Anyway, let's go on to the next tip. So here's a life tip. The darkness of your soul can have some brightness in it just by showing appreciation to others. So do me a favor. If you're finding this video useful, go ahead and hit the like button for me. Do it now so you don't forget. And if you won't do it for me, do it for the Gretsch. The Gretsch needs you. Next tip. Three. So we're getting organized again with our tracks with some track sorting. Okay. Now, of course, you can move around tracks manually. If you don't know how to do that, just hover over a blank area like this on a track what, until those sort of up and down arrows appear. And then you can just drag your track around like so. That's absolutely fine. But if you want to quickly sort them by a certain criteria, you can do that. Go up to the tracks menu at the top there. Click on sort tracks and you'll get a number of different ways to sort your tracks. Now, you've got name at the top there that's one way you could organize things we'll click on okay there now that may not make an awful lot of sense but once you know that this feature exists it may make you rethink the way you name things you may come up with a bit of a naming convention for example all of your different drums you may decide to put a capital d at the beginning d kick d snare d hi-hat knowing that in the future you may use this feature and you could organize your session really, really quickly in that way. That's one way you could do it. Um, I like the, th the fact that you can do things like sort here by muted. So if I go down to muted, click on OK, then all of those tracks I don't really use anymore. I kind of want to keep them, but I don't use them. I'll go down to the bottom. They're all at the end there, for example. So that's a really, really quick way to sort things like that out. So that's the track sort feature. You may not have known it existed, but you do now. Two. Okay, so you've got your project, it's progressing well, and you're probably finding you're using the scroll bars at the top and the sides quite a lot to navigate around like so, or you may be using your mouse wheel to navigate up and down. And you may even use the tip that we talked about at the beginning of this video, where you're resizing tracks uniformly and so on, so you can zoom into sections of the song. What if I told you there may be a better way of doing it by using a feature which seems a little bit forgotten in the Cakewalk community. I'm talking about the navigator, okay? We're going to go up to view at the top here and then go down to navigator down there of course we could also press alt shift and eight to open it but we'll use the menu here for now click on that and that opens it up at the bottom of the screen here now i'm just going to grab the top of it and drag it down because it's obviously a little bit too big for this particular project now this gives us kind of a whole map of our project in one area and we can take this blue box which is there in the middle and we can drag it around to quickly go to different parts of our song okay and what once you get to know your song and you know, hey, look, there's a lot of things going down here, you know, a certain bunch of instruments come in here, I can just quickly move there and deal with them, okay, without having to scroll around or search for things. 
So it's visually quite good for getting around, but I think it becomes more powerful when we start to resize this blue box. So for example, we can go to the left and the right side of it and we can zoom into things by changing its size. So now as we move it around, everything's a little bit more zoomed in. We can work on the details quickly. But what I really like about it is when we start to drag the top and the bottom of this box up and down. So I'll just grab the bottom of it, I'll drag it out, and you can see that the tracks are starting to resize there, yeah, okay? Now as I drag it all the way out, they all go really small like that, okay? They're all now the same size, and then when I push it back up again, they all expand, they get bigger, but they're doing it uniformly. They're all staying the same size now. So we can make it like so, and now everything is zoomed in, both horizontally and vertically. Now that's great. Now if I really quickly just want to whip to that other part of the song, I can just grab that blue box and go bang, I'm there really, really quickly and sort of reasonably precisely as well. So if you didn't know about the Navigator, give it a go for one project. See if it becomes useful to you. Now we're going to move on to our final tip. And I just promise you now, because you're probably wondering, it's got nothing to do with track organization or zooming or anything like that. Completely different. And I think you're going to love it. One. Don't you just hate it when you've been using Cakewalk for 30 years and you discover a feature which has probably been there for years and it's incredibly useful, but you only just found out about it. Well, that's one of those. I'm going to show it to you now. I just love this particular tip. So we've got this track here and there's some vocals I have with a plug in here. I'm using this um, intensity reverb from Arturia, oh, just probably my favorite reverb. And I've got it on this vocal here. Let's just have a listen. You've taken my heart and you give it up. I'm trying to figure and I find, for example, just hypothetically, that a control that I go for a lot in this to adjust it is going to be the size control here. OK, I'll just make it really big. Have a listen. You've taken my heart and you give it up. Or oh, you can hear the tail of that. Isn't that glorious? But anyway, so there's some controls that you frequently use and lots that you don't. Yeah. And it's a bit of a pain to have to open up the whole plugin just to adjust that. Right. So you don't actually have to do that. So in order to get around this, we're going to use something called assignable controls. So I'm going to go up to the top here to where it says options, click on options, go down to effects and then click on show assignable controls. Now on your console, this whole new a bunch of stuff appears with each track. That's if you have some effects in there. So I've got this intensity effect there. That's the only effect I've got. Now what it does is it automatically assigns four controls here to four, the first four that it finds to do with this plugin. Okay. Now that may not be very useful. So let's look at how we can, you know, assign one of these to that size control. So I'll just right click on it here. Okay. And then I'll go down to reassign control. And then I'm just going to look at all of the controls available to me from that plugin and I'll click on size. Okay. Now I can simply drag this gray bar backwards and forwards like so, just like a little slider. And I can adjust that parameter without having to open up the plugin every time like so. OK, so really you can get in there very, very quickly to do this. Now, this is going to be very useful, I would suggest, for especially for plugins like compressors, where you've got four main controls. You've got like uh, you've got threshold, you've got attack, release and you've got ratio. And you could assign those four controls there and you don't have to keep opening up that plugin. But I'm going to show you something now which is really, really cool just to add to this. So I've got this this size control here. And um, I can right click on it here. And I'm going to go down to remote control. OK, now I've got a MIDI keyboard attached out of shot. You can't see it here. Um, it's my Arturia key, key labs keyboard. And I've got lots of knobs and sliders on there. You have probably got them on your keyboard as well. And they, they can, you know, send messages via MIDI to adjust things. So I'm just going to wiggle one of my sliders backwards and forward at the moment. I'm going to click on the learn button here. Click on that. You can see that it's automatically picked up some activity. This controller 73, which is one of the sliders on my keyboard. I'll click on OK. And you can see now that as I move the slider on my keyboard, that size parameter is also moving. So I can play the track. You've taken my heart and you give it up. I'm trying to figure out how to fill your cup make adjustments like that, even from my hardware as well. I think this is brilliant.
Let me know what you think in the comments down below. If you already knew about this and haven't told me, yeah, then let me know in the comments down below. Say, hey, Mike, I'm a smart ass, but I don't share. As I said at the beginning, I will make regular videos like this if you guys want me to. So let me know about that with your likes and your comments down below. Thank you so much for joining me today. Check out the link in the description for my patreon.com where for as little as $1 per month, you can help me help you by making more videos like this. And I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.